So today we're going to talk about the importance of timing when dating because I have an interesting share with you all regarding my new relationship and most of you know I'm kind of in la la land which honestly I don't think I've ever really experienced before so um, I'm kind of reveling in it and at the same time I'm processing it because our relationship almost didn't happen and uh, for a number of different reasons and I, I thought it'd be important to share this because I also think that there's a lesson in this uh, experience I've had so so just to give you a recap um, you know I'm currently in a new relationship it's only about six weeks old and it happens to at the moment be long distance um, it's it started off with an email from her a year ago um, and she was contemplating moving to Los Angeles because she has children here and she happens she lives in Chicago and in the email uh, this is a match.com email she wrote me and and I basically blew her off I mean I wrote back saying thank you no thank you I'm only interested I'm not interested in a long-distance relationship and she wrote me back a really sweet sincere message and and I and I thought there was a lot of depth to it so um, I think I wrote her back and I said, you know, let's jump on the phone because she gave me an she gave me an argument, not arguing, but a, a reason why she, you know, has a good reason why she, you know, she might be in Los Angeles. And one of the things she did say is she loved my profile. She really appreciated the depth. She also openly admits she likes the fact that I was six foot two and she was doing searches for over six feet tall. So I, I, she has her, her her vein or superficial parts to her as well. Anyway, we got on the phone, and if I'm being really honest with myself, and, and I really didn't like our first phone call, and, um, and so I didn't bother following up, and she followed up a week, 10 days later, and I expressed to her I didn't like our phone call, and partially because she, she talked a lot about herself, and she, um, she talked a lot in stories and, and you know, I'm in a business where I hear this all day long. It's just like, I, I didn't feel like we were connecting with one another. So I told her this and what she said next surprised me. She said, um, I've heard this before. I really appreciate you sharing this with me. And we end up having a four and a half hour conversation and it was certainly better than our first one. But I still didn't feel, you know, I didn't feel like we were truly engaging with each other. Okay, so put that in a box in a second because you're probably going, what does this have to do with timing? Well, it's important to recognize that within timing, sometimes we don't see the big picture yet because we're focused on the micro. We're f focused on the micro. We're focused not, you know, the, not seeing the big picture. And that's what was happening for me. But we decided to become Facebook friends. And we kept in touch for over a year. Text message here, telephone call there. There was something, you know, we, we would, you know, we'd message each other and say, there's something about our profiles that we feel connected with one another. And I felt that about her and she felt that about me. So she decided to come visit. She was visiting her daughter in Thanksgiving about six months later than uh, when we first spoke. And she, you know, uh, intimated like wanting to get together. And I said, sure, but I was in this very arrogant place. And I think that COVID and being locked down, I was very cocooned and I didn't want to put energy in something that, you know, didn't feel like it was going to go anywhere. I didn't want to make new friends kind of feeling. And so when she came here in November, uh, this was last year, I kind of blew her off. I was a little bit arrogant because you know, I was working and she didn't, couldn't come to me. I was like, she couldn't come to me. I'm like, why bother? You know, I was, my attitude was why bother? And, and I acknowledged that that was an arrogance and kind of a selfishness from me, but we, but we still kept in touch. You know, we weren't able to meet in that point. We sent each other happy Thanksgiving, Merry Christmas. She reached out about hearing about my father not doing well. We kept in touch a little bit here, a little bit there. And we had a couple phone calls as well because we were both like, oh my God, the dating marketplace sucks. And she was asking me advice about dating. So we just kept this social acquaintance going on. And she lived in Chicago. She, was, she wasn't moving here. And I said, look, when you move here, I'll engage with you. 
So fast forward six months later, I happen to have the opportunity to go to Chicago where she lives, and most of you know that. And in that first meeting, there was just, there was just a sense of knowing just a different feeling than I've ever had. It wasn't lust, it wasn't limerence, it wasn't over infatuation, it was the sense of knowing. And when I think back, I always looked at her profile, there was just something, I kept saying there's something about her, but I don't know what it is. And so we had to meet to actually experience it. And yet along the way, I was putting up roadblocks because on some level the timing wasn't right for me and if it wasn't right for me, it wasn't right for her as well. And I wonder how often do we, do we you know, reject people because the, it's really not a reflection of a rejection, but it's really a reflection of the timing. I feel like there was still more work I needed to have. I mean, now I can look back and connect the dots. Dots. There was more work I needed to accomplish emotionally within myself to actually be ready for this person. And so I do believe timing is a big deal from the perspective of new relationships. I think you have to be at the right place at the right time to be able to connect with one another. If you still have, if you still have wounds and traumas that are still prevalent in your life, if you still have anger towards a past relationship, if you have this even arrogant strength streak that I had, it's going to block us from love. And so what happened is when we met, I was more open than I'd ever been before. I was able to get on a plane and, and leave this environment, this cocoon I created at, during COVID. And it just allowed me to be open. And when we, and I suspect she had been doing the same. She had stuff going on in her life. It's personal to her. I don't want to share it publicly. And she had to be in a space of being open. So when we met, our hearts were open. We weren't following, we weren't, it wasn't just lust or limerence. There was this sense of connection, of knowing each other. And this is, now fortunately for us, we weren't total strangers. This is the hard piece in dating today is we're, when we meet strangers, you know, the reality is, is we don't feel safe. We know very little about them. It's hard to feel, you know, get a sense of trust with somebody. And we spent a year building a little bit of, we built a little bit of a foundation. So when we met, it was like meeting a friend. And in fact, when I went out there, I really, we agreed, we're just meeting as friends. There wasn't an expectation of romance. And that's another piece of the, the puzzle. If we're expecting instant romance, instead of just saying I'm meeting a friend, it puts a lot of pressure to have this amazing first meeting mostly chemistry driven, and then only to have it fade later because if it takes off like a rocket, it's gonna crash. And while I feel like we, are, we, we took a rocket ship into space, what feels like it's been a, a gentle ride up into space. It isn't like shot like out a cannon, although a rocket is much more powerful than a cannon, but the idea is it's, it's, it's felt like it's gone at a great, a nice pace because the timing, coming back to the idea of timing, the timing has just felt synchronicitous. So what's the lesson in all this? You know what the most important lesson she and I both said to ourselves, we've said to each other is first, just be your authentic self. Don't go in with any expectations. And in a way we met with zero expectations or mostly very little expectations. And at the same time, because of that, it's allowed to blossom. Instead of planting a seed and it waking up the next morning and expecting a tree, we just simply planted a seed and we've been watering a little bit along the way. And I think because of that watering, because of that timing, it's allowed this to grow into beyond a seedling into a little plant that has the opportunity with sunlight to grow even more. And that's where we're at now in our relationship is the sun is now giving us that nourishment because we're operating from that place of radical honesty with one another, which just simply means being vulnerable, authentic, and transparent with each other. And also appreciating that, you know what, the timing was perfect, even though it didn't start the first moment we met. All right. That's my personal share with everyone. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Please post a comment below. Um, 
yes, I'm giddy right now. And I, I, my hope is that in my sharing of this experience, it invites you, it invites you to reach into your heart and really be more open and receptive to love because that's, the, that's what we needed for each other, to be in that space of open and receptive to love, to, be able to, to actually be able to see one another. And I really appreciated the timing to get there. All right. <laughs> Listen, if you found value in this, uh, please tell your friends about Midlife Love Mastery. Send them to my website, jonathanasley.com. Have them click the group coaching button so they can join our fantastic group. And I'm going to sign off this video as I always do. First off, give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Merrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn to someone, a pet, teddy bear, a pillow, and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.